welcome to Strength Reversed. It's Amy. Thank you so much for being here today. I am out of doors and I think that motivates me a little more to get my video done in a hurry because um, people might walk by. <laughs> so I used to do a quarterly catch up where I would catch up with everything I've been up to for um, three months at a time and I'm going to try to do every month or maybe just January because I felt like I had a few things that I enjoyed over the month and I'm always looking for inspiration for what to read or watch or uh, tarot shenanigans to get up to. So I thought I would recap and direct you to some videos and uh, maybe, you know, give you some good ideas of what you can do if you're, you know, got some time on your hands. I guess I will start with books. Um, I read reread Villette by Charlotte Bronte. Um, I adore this book. Okay. I, this is how big of a dork I am. Okay. I, these are my favorite parts. Um, there's a really funny part where she is forced to teach a class and she's never done that before. And she has to kind of, um, show the kids that she means business. And I just thought it was perfect. Um, if you like Jane Eyre, you may or may not like Villette. <laughs> now, it is a difficult read. You have to kind of have, you know, Google by your side so you can look words up in the dictionary. And if you do not have uh, basic high school French, it might get frustrating. But other than, it's, it's worth it though. It's worth it. And the end is maybe not what you would expect. It's not a happily ever after, I'll tell you that. But I like this book, Don't Tell Anyone, more than Jane Eyre. If you're a Bronte fan and you haven't read Villette, give it a go and stick with it. Because it's one of those books where you, you know, you've been with this, that Lucy Snow through so much of her life, you just miss her when you're done with the book. Um... The next book I read was Verity by Colleen Hoover, and my friend Sarah got me this for my birthday, and a lot of times she'll pass on books that she's done with to me. This is the literary equivalent of a Lifetime movie, but it's really good. It was definitely a page turner. I just wanted to read one more chapter, one more chapter, and it's a quick read. Um, it is about an author who is ghostwriting for an author who got in this bad car accident, but there's a lot of mystery involved. There are lots of naughty parts and there's a twist at the end and you know there's going to be a twist at the end, but instead it's a twist and a twist. It's a double twist at the end. The beginning is a little bit far-fetched because it's very dramatic at the beginning, something definitely gets your attention, but if this happened to you, you would probably not notice whether the guy next to you was hot or not. I'm just going to say that. This is um, definitely worth an inner, if you're looking for something just purely for entertainment, I really liked it. I really did. It was quick, but it was, it was juicy. Okay. I read a tarot book called Will You Give Me a Reading by Jenna Matlin, and I, you may have seen her on Instagram. I really like this book. It's what you need to read tarot with confidence, and it is good for all tarot ages, beginner through professional readers, but I think it's mostly geared toward professionals or people who want to read for others, and it is not a glossary of meanings. It covers all those difficult topics. Um, that come up if you read for others, especially professionally. So it talks a lot about um, coming to the, arriving at the question that they're really asking what to do if they are pushing back a little, what to do if they don't like their reading, um, court cards, ways you can read court cards. There are tarot reader tips throughout. There are exercises throughout um, how they can possibly mishear what you say. And it's um, 
a lot of interesting she shares her ways that she approaches the cards and I really appreciate when someone kind of shares how they do it and I can compare and see is that how I do it and you know maybe take some of the suggestions they have to make me a better reader. Um, I think I'm going to make a video. I have three books that are all for professional readers about reading professionally and I think I'm going to do a, a little compare contrast video. Next, TV shows and movies because you know I'm a TV junkie. Um, now I do watch all of these movies at home. I don't love going to the movie theater because it is so cold and so loud and other people are talking and phones are going off. So I like just staying home where it's, you know, I'm under a blanket. Um, I watched Oppenheimer with my son because I think it came out on Max or something. And I really enjoyed that one. Um, I like how they tried to show how he was torn and what was going on in his head. I do think there were a couple of parts that didn't need to be there, um, but it was good. I would have personally enjoyed a good documentary more than the movie, but I'm a documentary person. I also watched Barbie, which was entertaining to a point. It probably would not have been entertaining a second time. It's only a one time. I'm only ever going to watch it once. So if you played with Barbies like I did when I was a kid, some of the stuff I thought was hilarious. When she, when she opened the refrigerator and there was just a picture of food. We all remember that. <laughs> Although I never got the Barbie dream house. I'm still scarred for life. Um, but other than that, when it went down the patriarchy rabbit hole, I wasn't as amused because I thought it was stupid. Mattel was a producer of this movie and they tried to play it off like girls didn't think to be astronauts or doctors or lawyers or, you know, physicists before Mattel suggested it by making an astronaut Barbie. And I think probably we thought of it first and Mattel followed suit. So I don't think that Barbie has helped at all with women's liberation. And also I was very disappointed that they did not ever say Barbie's real name. I know they had a name at the end, but Barbie's name is Barbara Millicent Roberts. And I remember that because Roberts was my name growing up. So I had the same last name as Barbie and they didn't say it in the movie. Um, I watched The Crown on Netflix, the final, um, the final season. It was my least favorite season. It, I just feel like it's all the stuff that we've heard a million times and none of the intriguing things we didn't know about like like they had in the earlier seasons. So it was kind of a drag, but I have to watch the whole series, you know. I'm a Sister Wives fan <laughs> and I watched this last season of Sister Wives. I listened to the podcast. I watched the wedding special. I watched the lookbacks and the talkbacks and... You know, I'm, I don't know if I'm anyone's fan. I know some people like love Christine or love Janelle. Um, I don't know, uh, but I, I love to, wa I love to watch. I love when they talk about each other and <laughs> all the gossip. Um, it's kind of a shame. I'm kind of ashamed to to admit that, but I do, okay? And it was a fantastic season. I also also watched season 4 of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Receipts, screenshots, you know, it, it was it that was the probably the best finale of any housewives <laughs> epi any housewives series I've ever seen. Um, I watched on Netflix a four-part series called uh, The Light We Cannot See, and that was about a blind girl who would um, broadcast o over the radio. They would tell her what chapters to read in a book, and it would be code for what the Nazis were up to. She was in France, and then there was a young Nazi who was 
sort of forced into it, who had grown up listening to this radio broadcast on a channel that she was broadcasting on and so ended up finding her. And um, I liked it. Michael did not like it because he thought the dialogue was kind of hokey, but it, it was it was beautifully, you know, shot. And then I watched American Nightmare on Netflix and this is a true story. Now I had seen this probably a dateline or something similar somewhere, but it's about this couple um, and she was kidnapped <laughs> out of their home and they, the police thought that they had planned this and that it was just like a hoax, but it ended up being true and it was, you know, a whole can of worms. So that was pretty interesting. And we are in the middle of True Detective. So I'll let you know maybe in February or whenever this, this season of True Detective ends, how that was. Okay. Um, Dex, I made a walkthrough of the Fable Makers Tarot and people didn't seem to like the video. <laughs> I don't know if it's been canceled and I didn't get the memo, but I don't really care. I like the deck. So go ahead and watch that if you're into lenticular holographic decks that are that are uh, really dramatic. And I've been working with my ritual planner. I'm almost done with January. I've done every day. Um, I'm proud of myself because it's my daily three card spread. And tomorrow I will finish that up and do the January um, kind of the look back at January stuff that I want to do. And I just did my, my full moon spread and it was good times. I'm really liking this and I'm going to keep it up for February. Um, I don't know if you can see my little habit tracker. I've done tarot every day. It's the only thing that I've done every single day consistently. And I'm kind of liking it. I made a video about my new morning routine that has been an absolute game changer for me and I'm sticking with it and um, I'm it's I've just been feeling really good about it so check out that video if you're interested in seeing how I changed my mornings to incorporate all the things that were important to me. Okay well that was my January <laughs> and I've done you know other odds and ends and and whatnot. So the next video I'm going to make, I think is a walkthrough of another deck that I got for Christmas. And it's a good one. So I will talk to you later. Bye.